This is the Aston Martin V8 Vantage GT, and it's the most hardcore offering in the Aston Martin lineup. It's pretty sweet that a company like Aston Martin is making a car like this. Still has a V8, still has a manual gearbox, rear wheel drive, turn all the nannies off, have a load of fun. This is what that car is all about. It's born from their racing cars and their history of going to racetracks all over the globe, including the likes of Nürburgring and the Nürburgring 24 hour race. I've driven this car before, this exact car, you've seen it on this channel, but I'm curious where this car's roots come from. And to do that, I have to leave my home in Southern California and go very far away, but it's gonna be worth it. My journey takes me from Southern California all the way over to Germany, where the timeline of factory-backed Vantage race cars begins. I'm heading to the Aston Martin Technical Center, which lies next to a racing circuit that you've probably heard of, the Nürburgring. Allow me to introduce you to Rose. We're not just here to look at the damn thing though, as pretty as she may be, we're here to drive it. English rose because they're so delightful about that stuff. So the Nürburgring is somewhere around me. So it makes sense to bring this car here since Aston Martin is competing for it's either their ninth or tenth year here. And their goal is to do well in the GT3 class, and they're in a number of other classes as well. Uh, these cars are based on their road cars. This is a vantage that's just stripped out, uh, has a roll cage has some stuff necessary for racing, but other than that, it's a vantage. This is technically road legal. Um, this is also the car that you might remember from Top Gear. James May drove this, uh, naked. I was told that they burned the seat afterwards though, so I feel a little bit better. Germany, you do your roads so right. I'm not quite ready to compete at the 24 hour, but at least I'm getting a taste of what it would be like to compete in that. And when Aston Martin entered that race, they had no idea what they were doing. Um, they built this car in something like six months, and then it lasted the whole race. I think they qualified 53rd out of, you know, a, a lot of entries, and I think they finished up in the 30s. Um, it was a passion project of one of their vehicle engineers who was begging for years for them to do this, and Dr. Ulrich Bez, who was in charge, waited and waited, and it wasn't just because he didn't want to do it, he wanted the right car. This is the right car, this is Rose, and this is awesome.
I'm just cruising on the road to the Nürburgring. I'm passing campsites. There's people whose jaws are dropping as I go by them because this car is loud. I mean, I hope you can hear me fiddle with the microphone. This is a car that has raced and competed, and but it's still based in that street car, a car that I'm actually familiar with. I've been fortunate to spend a good amount of time behind the wheel of Aston Martin vehicles. I mean, it's the same steering wheel, it's the same gauges, it's the same Graziano six-speed, it's the same V8, even though it's much louder. It's an awesome experience, the same engine start, except this one's a push button instead of the key. Oftentimes in my job, I feel like a kid in a candy store. That's like on a real basic level. This is 10 times that, 10,000 times that. This is so awesome to be here. I've never been to the Nürburgring, but we're here, we're driving this car, and it's just, oh, it's so fucking visceral and awesome. And I gotta cut those swears out. So this is a rare treat to get to drive something that is so important to Aston Martin. This car means a lot to them. Uh, so it's not often you just... Hold on, let me try to fucking get out of here and not break their rare treat of a car. Laborious. James May was really wrong to pick this as his road trip car though. Holy shit. It's loud, it's stiff. I'd get naked though in this car. I would.